Heavenly Father, God, we, we know that you, you've heard in all these requests this morning, God. And we, and we know that you're the only one that can answer these prayers of these people. Pray, God, that you would be with these people, God. Be comfortable, Lord, and strengthen them, Lord, as only you can. Have your will in your way in each one of, of, the, of the lives of these people, God. God, we pray for this service this morning, God. We pray, God, you be in this class. You help us, Lord, to be able to speak to the class and tell them what you have told us, God. God, we pray for our worship service now coming up. We pray for the preacher, God. You will be with him, God. Yes. You will lead and guide and direct him in everything he said and love. It's, it's, it's all said and done that you will be uplifted and glorified for everything, God. We pray for Brother David as he leads the choir. That you will bless with songs, God, of praise unto you, God. That, Lord, you are truly worthy of our praise, God. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, God. Thank you, Lord, for saving our souls from mm -hmm. hells. Well, thank you for your love for us, God. That you love us that much, God, that you give your son to die for our sins, God, so we might be saved, God. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for everything that you do. We pray for the play that's coming up for long, God. We pray you bless, bless as you always have, God, and save souls through this play, God. We pray for our country. We pray for our local, <coughs> federal, and state. State and federal governments, God. God, that the election coming up, God, we know, God, your will is going to be done one way or the other, God. We pray, God, that you have your will and your way in our country. Pray for Israel, God, that you would be with them, God. Comfort and strengthen these people, God, as they go through all these wars for many years they have been through them, God. We pray that you would strengthen them again, God, and allow them to win victorious over these enemies, God. Bless this lesson, God. It's only you can. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 The title of today's lesson is The Power and Wisdom of God. How many of us believe in God's power? <laughs> we know He knows everything, He sees everything. He knows how to solve our problems we have in life. But we have to take these problems that we have and give them to him and lay them at the foot of the cross. Because he's the only one that can take care of these problems for us. Uh, the, the text is, uh, comes from Psalms 90, chapter 96 through chapter 100. We'll focus on Psalms chapter 97, verses 1 through 12. Key verses in Psalms 97, 12, it says, Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. The application says the student will meditate on the power of God and his great wisdom. And on seeking the context, he said, Many of the Psalms tell us uh, to worship God for all the things he has done for us. It's for example, in Psalms 33, it praises God for creating the universe. In Psalms 8, it prays that God for giving man dominion over his creation. In Psalms uh, 78, it praises God for delivering Israel from the Egyptian bondage. Psalms 89 praises God for his love and faithfulness to us. Psalms 139 praises God for always being with us and taking care of us wherever we might go. You know, sometimes we tend to forget we look over these times and, that uh, God is looking after us. He looks after us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. He looks over us and takes care of us. And sometimes we, we tend to forget that. And uh, just like the storm that just came, I truly believe that in this town, there were a lot of Christian people praying. Yep. Yeah. And I believe that prayer changes things. Yeah. Because it showed that that thing coming straight towards us, but it went around. And I believe God has everything to do with that. Our lesson text for this week praises God for simply being God. Together they celebrate many praiseworthy qualities of God from the beauty of His holiness in Psalms 96 verses 9 to His goodness, everlasting mercy, and enduring truth in Psalms 100 verses 5. Everyone, even the, even the earth itself, is commanded to worship the Lord and praise Him with uh, 
praise him with singing because he is God alone. We certainly have many reasons to praise the Lord for what he has done for us, but we should always make room in our praise to focus on God himself. Praise him not only for all he has done, but also for all he is. The anonymous Psalm 97 uh, praises God for being king of all the earth. The first words of Psalms give its theme, the Lord reigneth, in verses one. It praises God for his awesome power and might. <clears throat> it praises God for being God alone, exalted far above any so-called God. It praises God for his righteousness and righteous judgments. The last verse aptly sums up its focus. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Verses 12. We are commanded to rejoice in the very character and nature of the Lord himself. We are to give him thanks because he is holy. If God never did anything for us, we would still have innumerable reasons to praise him for who he is. The uh, question on the sixth is, can you pray to God right now and praise him for being God alone? Mm -hmm. I thank God alone for being who he is. Mm -hmm. And I thank him for all that he has created. If you, just, you don't have to look around. You don't have to look very far to see what God has done and what he has created. He said, that is all creation in uh, our reading in Genesis 131. It says, and God saw everything that he had made and behold, it wasn't, it wasn't just good. It was very good. Mm -hmm. In the evening and morning for the sixth day. Sometimes I don't think we, well, I know we don't give him credit for, for who he is and what he has done on this earth for us. I mean, you just look at the body and how it functions and all the parts. One has to work with the other. Mm -hmm. How you use your hands. How your mind tells that hand what to do. God in control of it. He knows, he knows everything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. He knows what's going to happen in that second that we don't have a clue. That's how great of a God that we serve. He's awesome and mighty and powerful. I can look over my life, and I'm sure y'all can too. <clears throat> and see how awesome and mighty God really is how far he has brought us how many things he has brought us through and how he has led us through things by that still small voice that when we obey it it always turns out Amen. it always turns out right do we have any questions on that first section? You know, Marty, you think about the power that God has and the control that he has over everything. I mean, just just like the storm we just had. It started way down in, in Cancun and just, you know, diddle daddled <laughs> around there for a while and built up. And look at all the, the states that it went into. And that was all the power of God. He controls the waters, the rivers, the lakes, the oceans, everything. And that's power. There's power behind water. And he's in control of all of it. It is. Just, I, I, I look at the forecasters sometimes, how they give all these models of how this thing's gonna go and where it's gonna go, when it's gonna go. Oh my gosh. So many times. Mm -hmm. So many times it just <laughs> goes where he wants it to go and yes, rain where he wants it to rain. The first part, it says, the Lord is king. It comes from Psalm 97, verse 22. That the Lord reigneth. Let the earth be joy. Let the multitude of owls be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness 
around the valley. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. It says, I have a friend who often reminds me that the Lord is, is on his throne. When I am complaining about all the bad in the world, or when life is not going my way, he responds. But the Lord is on the throne. That's a real friend. Mm -hmm. When the Lord remind, I mean, when the, when a friend reminds you about the Lord, the Lord's goodness and His mercy, mm -hmm. about it still being on the throne, that He has all power on it, everything's gonna be all right according to His will. That's a good friend. It says, indeed, it is a constant comfort knowing that the Lord reigns. You know, whether our whether our president likes it or not, the Lord is in, in charge. He will be in charge from now on. He said, and, in, and, and he's in control in spite of everything seeming to be out of control and falling apart. <laughs> we do not understand why the Lord allows such atrocities. But one thing we do know is that the Lord does not relinquish his reign over the earth or the entire universe. Mm -hmm. That the Lord reigns over the earth gives cause for the earth to rejoice. There is no one more qualified to rule the earth since the Lord created it and sustained it. God is the force behind creation and holds it together by his power. The natural laws are not in control of the universe. God is in control and is the creator of natural laws. The mention of the multitude of isles, verse one indicates the far off places. The Lord's reign rule, uh, the Lord's sovereign rule reaches uh, beyond the nation of Israel to the furthest island of the sea. It also reaches for eternity, past to eternity, future, meaning he has, he has and always will reign over the earth. We can be glad about that. The clouds and darkness of verse 2 indicate the mysterious nature of the Lord's reign. None of us can boast of knowing all the Lord does and why he does it. The New Testament often speaks of mysteries and while they may be known through the revelation of God, the depth of these mysteries will never be fully grasped. First Corinthians 2 and 19. For, for example, the mystery of the iniquity that is at work in the world causes many to ask, why? Like Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. Why does God allow Satan to rule this world? Why would he never, why would he ever allow Satan's anti antichrist to come? dominate the world and kill many of its saints. We can say that it is so separate, that it is too separate the evil from the good, to separate the evil from the good and those who love the truth from uh, those who do not. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses 10 through 12. The question of why God allows evil to prosper in this world is still a mystery, but we can rest assured that God has his purposes and he is still in control. We can also say that the Lord will ultimately bring uh, righteousness and true judgment, ju uh, to true judgment, uh, justice to the earth. This will be achieved at the Lord's second coming in the establishment of the millennial kingdom. The world in which we live now is full of righteousness and injustice, unrighteousness, excuse me. Let me read that again. The world is in which we live now is full of unrighteousness and injustice because it is currently Satan's domain. But the Lord is coming to bind Satan for 1,000 years and rule in perfect righteousness and justice. I say hallelujah. Amen. I look forward yes. to those days. It, it constantly bugs me. I know, I know it does, y'all. I'm not known anymore. It does it. They all preach it. He, he aggravates us. And I look forward to it day. Yeah, he won't be able to do that anymore. Do mm -hmm. And that day is coming, and I believe and it's not going to be long. He's going to come back. The question on the sex is this, in what way does it comfort you knowing that the Lord reigns? Anyone want to comment on that? All I think about is what would the alternative be? And I am so glad it's him and not <clears> something <throat> else. That's right. 
I wrote that I am in complete comfort knowing that his word is completely true. And what I doubt, he reigns and deserves our praise for who he is and what he has done on Calvary for us. Any questions or comments on that section? The second, the second part says the Lord is powerful. It comes from Psalms 97, uh, verses 3 through 9. A fire goeth before him, and burneth up his enemies round about. His lightning enlightened the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Yeah, I don't know about you, I'll stop right here for a minute. I don't know about you, but when the Holy Spirit comes over us sometimes, we get so weak. And it's just, just that little bit of power that we feel. If he, if he were to give us too much power, we'd pass out. That's how powerful God is. That's how, that's how strong he is. That's the reason when we have problems in life, we need to give them to God because of, because of his power. He can handle any of our problems, no matter what they are. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images that boast themselves of idols and worship him. All you gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. For, for thou, Lord, art, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. It says in this section, it says, Psalms poetically describes the Lord's awesome power in this section, in verses 3, the Lord is a consuming fire, destroying his enemies. Hebrews 12, 29. Psalm 97, 4 pictures the Lord as an approaching storm which causes the people to tremble. At times, the Lord revealed a literal storm in Exodus 19, 9 through 16, or 9 uh, and 16. Both Micah and Nahum using language of melting hills or mountains, Psalm 97 5, to indicate the Lord's coming judgment, Micah 1 4 and Nahum 1 5. Together, these expressions indicate the coming judgment of the Lord upon the earth, the whole earth, and likely point to the second coming of Christ who will come to judge the earth. The Lord, even, you know, knew what to put in this lesson, particularly talking about storms like we just had. And he knew that when we got to this lesson, that would be happening. Okay. Okay. Yep. And how many of these verses here, it's a song written dealing with different verses that we read. It's, it's just great to think about it. It might come across at first like uh, a tough lesson, but there's a song written there that somebody else felt real good about in the spirit and wrote that song so to fall back on and know how God is love. There's a, there's a message for us in, in the verses of God, yeah. the Holy Word, and sometimes we miss those lessons. <laughs> uh, I know when, when the when he talks about the uh, approaching storms causing people to tremble. I was down at my right place tying my shed down to my tractor because it's not very stable, you know, as far as 75 a mile long wind is concerned. And me and, me and Joe strapped his copper down and we strapped our shed down because we know, we know how God's power is and what God's power can do. Yeah. He says, we like to think of God as the God of love, but not the God who is a consuming fire. 
Both his love and judgment are essential qualities that must go together. God is completely and perfectly holy and cannot accept anything unholy. When Aaron's sons, Nadab and Benahu, uh, disobediently offered strange fire before the Lord in the tabernacle, the unholy offering angered the Lord, and he killed Aaron's son with fire, the book of 10, uh, 1, 2, 3. We should praise the Lord for his steadfast love and his holy, holy judgment. You know, God, God is a serious God. He takes things serious. Yeah. That he tells us it's something he wants us to do or not to do. He's serious about it. And that's the reason I don't believe the world wants anything to do with it. You know, sometimes we sometimes when we tell the people something, we may say it the wrong way. But we sometimes we say it directly. God says it directly. That's the reason they don't like it. He'll, he'll, he'll tell it like it is, whether you like it or not. And he expects, expects, he expects his children to, to go by what he tells us. He says, none of us can stand before the Holy God without being consumed. Fortunately, God has provided the way for us to be made righteous in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. For we had uh, made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made righteousness of God in him. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Without the love of God as manifested in Jesus Christ, we would be, we would all be consumed in God's holy wrath upon sinners. Jesus Christ is the only way out. He is the only way to salvation. And uh, to go to heaven, we must be born again. It's plain and simple. He says, but God, uh, But God poured out his wrath against sin upon his son so that those who will believe in him will be saved from his wrath. The nemesis of Israel was adultery. How many times did Israel commit adultery against God with the idols of the foreign nations? <clears throat> the term confounded in Psalm 97, verse 7, means to be put to shame. Every time Israel sinned against God with adultery, they were humiliated by being captured by their enemies as God's way of punishing them. I wonder if we too have our idols, which will end up humiliating us. You know, anything can be an idol. If we put it before God, it, it can be an idol. And that's something God doesn't allow. It says the psalmist said that uh, the guys were to worship the one and only true God, verse 7. And that God was exalted far above all gods. Verses 9. Is he suggesting that the idolaters' gods were real gods? The Apostle Paul was clear to say, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. First Corinthians verses, or chapter 8, verses 4. There is a reality behind idolatry, namely demons. Deuteronomy and 2 Chronicles and Corinthians. Demons fall on angels of Satan, believing in God and tremble, James 2, 19. They knew Jesus Christ and the Apostle Paul in Acts 19, 5, or 15. They knew that Jesus is the Son of God and were afraid of him, Matthew 8, 49. But will they worship God someday? Some commentators uh, point to the so, uh, so which I looked this up and, and pronounced it for me, but now I, think, now I can't pronounce it. But uh, anyway, reading of Psalms 97 7 as worship him, you know, all the, all his angels, which is quoted in Hebrews 1 verse 6, uh, chapter 1 verse 6. Indeed, the angels of heaven do worship uh, God today in Revelation uh, uh, 7 verses, chapter 7 verse 11. I do not know if the demons behind the idol uh, gods of the Old Testament will be forced to worship God or not, but I do know of a time when the false god of the Philistines, Dagon, was forced to bow before the ark of God and the Philistines were humiliated because they captured the ark, 1 Samuel 5. 
But the essence of this song is to say that God is exalted high above all the earth in Psalm 97, verse 9, and high above all who are on the earth. Be it idolaters, be it idolaters worshipers, false gods themselves, or the demons behind them, they are subject to the power of the Almighty God. I looked up that word I couldn't pronounce. And it, it, the tran what it is, it's the first translation of the Old Testament from the Hebrew to the Greek. Uh, the question on the section says, does the Lord's mighty power give you comfort or cause you fear? Let me explain. Anyone want to comment? Like probably both. Yeah, both. <laughs> Of it's a fear of respect. Fear of respect. That it, it, it is. To fear him is to know him. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Fear of the Lord is to begin to acknowledge him. Exactly. It, it's not talking about fear like uh, like this COVID thing. Yeah. That's not. not we should not fear. Respect. Respect. Uh, the last section, uh, I kind of, <clears throat> I don't know how to say it, on the people's response. Uh, I'll, I'll just read it. Psalms 97, uh, verses 10 through 12, it says, You that love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He, he delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous, and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. It says that Psalms ends with a call to the people of God. Those who love the Lord to hate evil. To love the Lord is to hate evil. This is love and hate are opposites. The Lord and evil are opposites. Uh, when, our, when our loving affections are set on the Lord, we will hate evil in our own lives and in the lives of others. I think to say that right there is like when we see someone that's living certain lifestyles, we hate that sin, but we love that person. Well, I think it's what he's talking about here. It says this, this does not give us an excuse to hate people who do evil things because the Lord told us to love our enemies even when they do evil things to us. Matthew chapter 5, verses 44. But we are to hate evil itself. The statement, he preserves the souls of his saints in Psalm 97, verse 16, uh, succinctly expresses the security of the believer. What a beautiful truth it is to know that we saints, believers, are eternally securing God's salvation. Amen to that. We may wonder if the statement, he delivered them out of the hand of the wicked, is true. What about the many martyrs who were killed as they witnessed for the Lord? What about those who have uh, been imprisoned and abused for the cause of Christ? It may uh, just be that the Lord so chooses to deliver his saints by taking them out of this world through death. Uh, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. And they love not their lives unto death, Revelations 12, 11. Believers who are made righteous in Jesus Christ can have joy in this life and even more joy in the life to come. I have found in my own experiences that I am most joyful in and experience the deepest happiness while I am in a right relationship with God. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Even in times of trials and troubles, I can find joy unspeakable and full of glory. When my heart is right with God, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. How does this work? How does that work? When my heart is right with God, my focus is on Him and all the promises He has made for me. I am not distracted by the things of the world or the love of the world. So regardless of what is happening to me around me, uh, my joy comes from being focused on the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Psalms 97 verses 12. 
That's where true happiness comes from. It from, comes from God. There's no other happiness you can have with outside of God. You can, if it is, it's false happiness. Hold this section. It says, how does Psalms 97, 10 through 12 bring comfort and encouragement? And on this section, when I was reading uh, 97, verses 10, it, it brought back memories of Daniel. I'm going to read, and I'm sure y'all know it, but I want to bring it back to everybody's remembrance. As God brought back to my remembrance of Daniel 3.16, verses 27, it brought back a lot of comfort and encouragement. So I'd like to read that. You think about this, what he says. He that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of the saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. He's talking about they was they he passed it, Nebuchadnezzar passed a decree for everybody to worship the golden image of their gods. And he said, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. You ever been in that fire furnace? He delivered them. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve the gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set. Set up. Then, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and form of his uh, of his was changed against the Agrat Meshach and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace. This man was mad because he would, they would not give in and serve that God in the golden image. One seven times more he heated this furnace that it, was, that it won't be heated. He, he commanded the most mighty men that were, that were in, the, in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men had done nothing wrong. This is why Jesus Christ had done nothing wrong. They found no fault in them. But you see what they've done to Jesus Christ. They tried to do it to these three these people. It didn't matter except for the guy that needed a political win. Hmm. Sound kind of normal and sound kind of recent. <laughs> You know, Marty, really when you think about it, by and large the world is in spiritual darkness and has been since Adam and Eve. And I think in my mind when the second coming of the Lord is going to be the most phenomenal event that has ever happened on the face of the earth. And I think as, as humans, there is no way that we can even comprehend the power and the glory and the majesty of our Lord and what he's going to do. And I, it, it, who knows when it's going to happen, but we have televisions and cameras and satellites all over this world. It will be something that will be televised. Everybody is going to know when the Lord sets down. And it's a bliss. And we terrify it for some joyous event for us. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. be gone by then. Yeah. We'll be gone. We'll be raptured out. But. Well, he's going to take care of us. Yes. This is the verse 21. Yes. Absolutely. Then these men were bound in their coats, and their hoses, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king commands to preserve it, and the furnace exceeding high, the flame of the fire slew, <coughs> uh, slew those men that looked, was looking at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was that hot. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, king, was astounded, and rose up in the haste and spake, and said unto his council, did not we cast three men? 
found them in the midst of the fire? Then answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four. Amen. Four <clears throat> looks walking in the midst of the fire. So when we have problems, think about that four. Yeah. They have no hurt. In the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came in the mouth of the burning fire furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come with me. <laughs> then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes of the governors, the captains, and kings of the council, being gathered together, saw these men upon the two bodies of fire and rope, but no power nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had bath on them. In verse 28, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is the man that hey. threw him in the fire furnace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he, he sees what happened. That's what, that's what people have to see to be able to, to get to heaven, they got to go through Jesus Christ. They got to see what he did. This man seen, who has set his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and had changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve no worship any God except their own God. So, do we have a powerful God? Yes. We have an awesome God. Amen. You can just look up back over your own lives and see it. It's like a puzzle. You put one piece at the time from you when you was young to now, and it, it, it won't be long we'll have that puzzle complete. When we get to heaven, we will be. Thank y'all for coming this morning. Appreciate y'all listening and being here. Brother Dan, could you just listen to me? My Father, we once again thank you for your word. We thank you for all of it being true. Yes. We thank you for the study in Psalms. As we'll learn each Sunday morning, more how to praise you and be thankful for who you are. We bless it. We ask you to bless the service today in this house. For each service we have a special time under your leadership and your power. For the songs that shall be sung, the word that shall be shared today, we pray that we will not be done. Thank you, Marty. Thank you for this class, all the classes in this church. We we'll give all the praise to you. And thank you one more time. We will say Friday. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.